and Kyle joins us for our first look at sports. Now, it's great that you're here because you were actually busy over the last five days covering some hot chuck wagon action. Yeah, they were at Onion Lake. It's the last show before the Stampede, and uh, all wraps up with Championship Sunday yesterday. And this was a non-point day, meaning cash was up for grabs in every single race, including that $25,000 dash for cash featuring Wayne Knight, Lane Bremer, and the wily Ray Mitsuing. So let's take you to the big race. Knight won the aggregate earning him the Lunyon Lake Show title. He set the track record on Saturday, and he was going off the money barrel for the dash. Bremner off barrel number two, and the Chief had the three barrel. An exciting finish to the dash, but you didn't see any of it. Knight caps off a great week by padding his wallet. His rapid run of 115.69 was just eight one hundredths of a second away from setting his own track record. So taking a look at the top five times from Championship Sunday, Knight sits at the top of the list. Devin Mitsuing is second with a 115.72. Bremner finished third. Brian Labucane was fourth. And Jim Knight's outfit, driven by Chance Bensmiller, rounds out the top five. But this day was all about Wayne Knight, who takes home a handsome share of that $25,000 in the final show before the Calgary Stampede. I'm going to buy some tires tomorrow. <laughs> Need the tires. And uh, I got bank manager that said she'd see me after Calgary, so maybe I'll see her tomorrow. <laughs> Rain, Wayne ran tough, and uh, we come run a little bit, but uh, he had a lot of horsepower today, so a good second, I guess. It went the way I expected uh, to go uh, with Wayne drawing number one barrel and Lane on two. It's tough to outturn those two boys. They're turning hard. And we'll go from the track to the ice. Every kid who grows up playing hockey dreams of one day being drafted into the National Hockey League. And for Vermilion's Brandon Baddock, that dream came to life over the weekend. Baddock was a late round pick on Saturday afternoon, going 161st to the New Jersey Devils. Despite having conversations with the Devils before the draft, he was still surprised come draft day. I was sitting there with my dad, and uh, my agent called me. I wasn't watching the draft, and he let me know that I was drafted by the Devils. Just, I was excited. It was surreal. Still can't believe it. Now the 19-year-old definitely adds size to the Devils organization. The 6'4", 210-pound winger racked up 128 penalty minutes during the regular season, and he helped the Oil Kings win the WHL Championship and the Memorial Cup this spring. Yeah, it's been a thrill year. I don't, know, I don't think I could ask for much more. The big winger will take part in Devils prospect camp in mid-July. Well, every good pirate needs a ship. How else would you make enemies walk the plank? Well, the Prairie Pirates and their fans have gotten behind calling their home diamond the pirate ship, and I like it. The Northwest Ball Club had a four-game homestand on the ship this weekend, and we'll show you some action from Saturday afternoon. Now check out the newest addition to Guest Field, and the ship is now complete with skull and crossbones flags, making it an official Buccaneer boat. Pick it up, 2-0 visitors in the fifth. A man on for Brett Resch. He hits one up the middle, plating another run to increase the lead to three zip for the Giants. A few batters later, Eric Clemen Haga will bring Resch home as he gets a hold of one, golfing it to deep left. And just like that, it's 4-0 Saskatoon. Same score, bottom of six. Pirates needing to get something going. And watch Matt Nielsen take one for the team, literally right off the shoulder. But the good news is the Pirates get a man on base. Darian Gamble up next to bat, and he smacks one right up the pipe. That moves Nielsen from first into scoring position. The Pirates just keep rallying Brett Issa up next, and he gets a hit to score Nielsen. Just like that, the Pirates are on the board. Brett Fazier is going to be the very next up at the dish, and he's going to drive the very first pitch that he sees deep to the corner and left. Clark Thompson comes across to cut the lead to 4-2. The hits keep coming. Blake Robertson, yeah, that's another one right up the middle. 
Esau would score to cut it to 4-3, and we are going to have a play at the plate. Frazier comes in with the slide, but he's called out, not happy about it. Yesterday, I thought he was out, but after seeing it a few more times, I'm not so sure. Take a look at the replay for yourself. That's a close call. The Pirates would go on to lose this game by a 4-3 margin. They went 1-3 on the weekend, and will play a rare Wednesday night game at Guest Field starting at 6.30.